antonyms of the following words. So what do you mean by antonyms? Antonyms are words that makes the opposite meaning of a word. So if we actually mean a word that has a meaning opposite to that of what we have over here, that is known as an antonym, right? So we have eight, nine words given there. We need to find the antonyms of all these nine words. That is a task, right? Yeah, we have a box there so that it's easier for us to select. Good. Down. Down. Up. Isn't it? Down. Up. So we have up here. Near. Near. Far. Is it? Yes. Far is there. Poor. Rich. What's opposite of poor? Rich. Happy can be unhappy, no unhappy, then sad. Yes, sad. S A D, sad. Heavy, very heavy. Light. Heavy weight, light weight. Okay, light. Bad, the opposite is good. Good, yes, good. Enter, exit. Enter, exit, yes, exit. Smiled, cried. Smiling, crying. Yes, start, stop. If you start something, we have to stop something also. So that thing also, isn't it? Yes. So what are the antonyms? Down. Up, near, far, poor, rich, happy, sad, heavy, light, bad, good, enter, exit, smiled, cried, start, stop. Right? So we will uh, read it once again. Right? Down, up, near, far, poor, rich, happy, sad, heavy, Light, bad, good, enter, exit, smile, cried, start, stop. Right? So now I will keep the screen the same for another minute for you so that you, you, you two can go through the antonym word, the opposite words. Okay? So, after completing the fun with the grammar part, now we have come on to the skills and activity part. We have already told you that, uh, I have already told you in the previous lesson also, I have told you the same thing. That uh, English is a language and we need to deal it as a language, right? So, we have to be very careful that uh, we need to learn language skills, listening, writing, reading, speaking. Okay, so this part that we have with every lesson is uh, aimed at uh, this particular thing that is to make us effective with our language skills, listening, reading, speaking and uh, writing aspects, right? So we will start the session with the reading. We will listen to the reading section first. Okay, you will listen to the reading section first. I will read it after that. And then I will let you have the time to read it. Okay. I will read it first. 
right? You will listen to the reading first. I will read it next. And after that, I will let you have the time to read it. Right? Let's read. Read the following passage. The President of India lives in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. The main building has 340 rooms. It also has a huge garden called Mughal Garden. Other offices, residences for the staff and bodyguards, stables and huge open spaces. The total area is 320 acres. A straight road called Rajpath starts from the huge square in front of the Rashtrapati Bhavan known as the Vijay Chowk. The Rajpath ends at the India Gate. On both sides of Rajpath are the North and South Blocks where various ministries work from. The Mughal Garden is at the back of Rashtrapati Bhavan where a variety of flowers grow. One may find the roses, jasmines and lilies etc. in the garden. It is open to the public in February every year. People visit it in large numbers. It also has many fountains. All the presidents who have lived at the Rashtrapati Bhavan have taken great interest in its maintenance. Okay, so now you have listened to that, okay? Fine, so it's an interesting passage, right? So I will read this passage now. Fine. The President of India lives in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. The main building has a 340 rooms. It also has a huge garden called the Mughal Garden. Other offices, residences for the staff and the bodyguards, stables and a huge open spaces. The total area is 320 acres. The straight road called Rajpath starts from a huge square in front of the Rashtrapati Bhavan known as the Vijay Chowk. The Rajpath ends at the India Gate. On both sides of Rajpath are the North Blocks and the South Blocks where yeah, the ministers, various ministers work from. The Mughal Garden is uh, at the back of the Rashtrapati Bhavan where varieties of flowers grow. One may find some of the roses, jasmines and lilies in the garden. It's open for the public in February every year. People visit in large numbers. It also has many fountains. All the presidents who have lived at the Rashtrapati Bhavan have taken great interest in its maintenance. So it's a description about our Rashtrapati Bhavan. Rashtrapati Bhavan means where the President of India lives. It's a very huge building. It has 340 rooms inside it. Where in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. It also has a very huge garden behind it which is very famous as a Mughal garden. Uh, it also has other offices in the President's office. Residence for the staff. Separate buildings are there for the staff to reside over there. Bodyguards and staff. Stables. Stable means Yes, the place where we keep the horses and the huge open spaces around it. Now, why stables are there in Rashtrapati Bhavan? Huh? Yes, in our military army, when a president goes for some functions at all, there is a special category of soldiers who will come on the horseback. Okay, so they are to accompany the president wherever he goes and they do live in the same Rashtrapati Bhavan complex itself. That is why. There are spaces for these stables also. So the total area is 320 acres in a New Delhi. Uh, from the Rashtrapati Bhavan, there is a straight path which comes uh, to the India Gate. Okay, this straight path is known as the Rajpath. Right? Uh, Vijay Chowk. Right? So the road is called. Rajpath and 
and it comes to the point called Vijay Chowk. And it is this Vijay Chowk where we celebrate our Republic Day uh, programs and all. Right? Now, uh, on the either sides of Rajput, we have the government offices, different departments. The central ministry actually is working on these offices. So, the buildings on the northern side of this Rajput is called as the northern block. And the southern side are known as the south block. Okay. So, north block and the south block are the offices. Which are located on the either sides of Rajput. From where the different ministers in the central ministry work. Right. So, we have already talked about this Mughal garden. Which, is, uh, which actually comes... Behind the Rashtrapati Bhavan, on the other side of Rashtrapati Bhavan, it's very famous. We can usually find a large number of flowers, flowering plants, and different uh, shapes also over there, right? So a good number of gardeners also work there. It's open for the public in the month of February. So only during February we are allowed to go in and have a look at the Mughal gardens and. Uh, all the presidents who have lived in Rashtrapati Bhavan till date has taken extreme step, extreme care in uh, keeping these uh, Mughal gardens, right? A lot of flowering plants, uh, fountains, all these things are actually there, right? So that is about the Rashtrapati Bhavan. And now I will uh, keep the screen the same for another minute for you so that you can uh, read the passage yourself. Fine. Now, we have got some questions that we need to answer from this particular passage. So, the first question is, where does the President of India live? Where does the President of India live? The answer, the President of India lives in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. The President of India lives in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. The second question, what is the total area covered by the President's house? So, what is the total area in which we have this Rashtrapati Bhavan? The answer, the total area covered by the president's house is 320 acres. Okay, so the building, its the gardens, the residence for the other staff, bodyguards, stable, everything together, it's in 320 acres. Now, the next question. The third question, what is the name of the road between Rashtrapati Bhavan and the India Gate? What is the name of the road which lies in between the Rashtrapati Bhavan and the India Gate? What is that? Rajpath is the name of the road between the Rashtrapati Bhavan and the India Gate. What is the name of the road? Rajpath. Right. What is the name of huge square in front of the Rashtrapati Bhavan? There is a huge square which is there in front of the Rashtrapati Bhavan and that is called the Vijay Chauk, right? So Vijay Chauk is the name of the huge square that is in front of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. The next sentence, when is the Mughal garden open for the public? I just told you here, no? it's open for the public only in the month of February. The Mughal garden is open for the public in February every year. 
So Mughal Garden is open for the public in the month of February. Right? It's open for everybody during that time. 